party. Everyone's invited. Bring your friends. We're gonna have some fun. It's a party. Hey, let's get excited. Time to tell everyone. It's a party. Everyone's invited. Bring your friends. We're gonna have some fun. It's a party. Hey, let's get excited. Welcome to Messy Easter. I'm Naomi. 
And I'm Howard. And we're really glad that you've joined us this morning. It's been a bit different this year, hasn't it? So at Christmas, we bought you Messy Christmas in a box. And now we are at a lovely time of the year, Easter. So enjoy Messy Easter. So we have got absolutely loads of fun stuff for you today. There's so many things in the box. There's an Easter egg, booklets, games, but it's not just this video, YouTube. There's also a Zoom afterwards where you can jump on with your parents at Uncarers and really enjoy that as well. So over to Lucy and the team. Have fun. Bye. Hi kids, happy Easter. My name's Lucy and I lead the God First Kids team. I love this time of year when the sun starts to shine, the flowers start to bloom and you can hear the lambs bleating in the fields. Spring is my favourite season. I wonder what your favourite season is. I also love Easter. I love chocolate. I bet you do too. But is Easter all about chocolate eggs? We asked a couple of our youth what they associate with Easter. They played a game called The Last Word. They had one minute to say all the things that they associate with Easter. And the person who said the last word before the timer went off was the winner. Let's find out who won. The theme is Easter. Three, two, one, go. Miracles. Resurrection. Jesus. God. Uh, coming back to life. Easter Bunny uh, The Last Supper Chocolate Chicks uh, Daffodils <laughs> Lambs <laughs> uh, Tomb um, Disciples Palm Sunday uh, Flowers um, New Life Spring um, Mary <laughs> Church um, new oh, life. I said that. You said time. that. Music, music, music. music. Um, Palm Sunday. You said that already. <laughs> I don't. Um, I don't know. And oh, um, oh. hot cross buns. Hot cross buns. Hot cross buns. <laughs> wow, guys, so many ideas. I think you've covered everything there is to do with Easter. So kids, did you get your messy Easter box? This looks so exciting. Let's take a peek inside. Ooh. Wow, jelly beans, my favorite. I wonder why they're in there. Ooh. Oh, a whole host of things needed for your Zoom by the looks of it jelly bean prayer. Red is for the blood he gave. Green is for the grass he made. Yellow is for the sun so bright. Orange is for the edge of night. Blue is for the sins we made. White is for the grace he gave. Purple is for his hour of sorrow. Pink is for our new tomorrow. I wonder what that means. Maybe we'll find out more as we go along. And here's one that you can colour in too. Now, what else is in my box? Plates, chopsticks, a straw. How odd. What can we do with those? We're going to start with the straw challenge. Can you get all your jelly beans moved from one plate to the other in less than a minute? On your marks, get set, go! Caleb the winner. 
Okay, now for the chopstick challenge. Three, two, one, go. needed for. That looks super fun. Hey, let's play that on our Zoom party in a while. Now, what else is in this box? Oh, 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 oh. this one looks like it's going to be my favourite. It's an Easter egg. The real Easter egg. Oh, I wonder what that means. Now, do you think I can eat this yet? It's not quite Easter. I I do have one more week to wait, but it just looks so yummy. Oh, hey, what else is in here? It's not just an egg. There's a booklet too. The story of Easter. Oh, 2,000 years ago, a man called Jesus brought a message of hope and love to the world. Wow, that sounds an amazing story. I'd love to read that some more. Let's hear that story. This is the best story ever. When God created the world, he made people and he loved them very much. But God's people weren't perfect. They sinned again and again. And since God is perfect and just, he had to punish their sins. But God didn't want the people he loved to have to die for their sins. So he told them to kill a perfect lamb and that its blood would cover their sins for a little while. But God made them the best promise ever. One day, he would send the Lamb of God to save all people from their sins forever so that they wouldn't have to keep doing this. Many years later, God kept his promise and sent his son Jesus to earth. A man named John knew God's promise was coming true. And when he saw Jesus, he said, look, the Lamb of God, he takes away the sins of the world. John knew that God sent Jesus to be the perfect sacrifice that would forever pay for people's sins. Jesus was an Israelite, which meant he also celebrated the Passover. So one year, he and his friends were making their way to Jerusalem, where everyone was getting ready to eat the Passover meal. The people heard that Jesus was coming, and as he entered the city, a huge crowd spread their coats on the road and waved palm branches. They believed that Jesus had come to save them, so they shouted, Hosanna, which means save us. At the same time, some Jewish leaders saw how much the people loved Jesus. These leaders didn't believe that he was God's son and felt threatened by his power and popularity. They made a deal with one of Jesus' followers named Judas, and he agreed to hand Jesus over to them in exchange for some money. It was now time for the Passover meal to remember how God had saved his people from slavery in Egypt long ago. So Jesus sat down to eat with his disciples. He thanked God for the bread on the table, broke it, and gave it to his disciples to eat. Jesus told them that whenever they eat the Passover bread from now on, they should remember him. Then Jesus thanked God for a cup of wine and said, Each one of you drink some of it. This wine is my blood, which will be poured out to forgive the sins of many. When the meal was finished, they went out to the Mount of Olives to pray. That's when Judas showed up with a crowd of people ready to arrest Jesus. When they took Jesus away, he was beat up, yelled at, made fun of, 
and eventually nailed to a cross where he died this seemed like the worst day ever but what people didn't understand was that God had the best plan ever he was working these things out for good God allowed all of this to happen because Jesus was the perfect sacrifice the Lamb of God who was saving people from their sins forever after Jesus died they put his body in a tomb and sealed it shut with a giant stone but three days later God sent an angel to roll the stone away when he did everyone could see that Jesus wasn't in there some ladies came to the tomb and the angel said to them don't be afraid he has risen from the dead it was the best day ever the women were filled with joy and hurried to find Jesus's friends as they were telling the disciples all they had seen and heard Jesus appeared and showed them all that he really was alive before he went back to heaven Jesus told his disciples to go everywhere in the world and tell the good news to everyone Jesus said whoever believes will be saved God had now saved everyone from their sins by sending his son Jesus to be the perfect sacrifice for all time because of what Jesus did anyone who believes in him and follows him can be forgiven of their sins Jesus is the best ever You can go and get it. Get it. Get it. That's it. Now 
How many have you got? Oh, two each. Close it, close it, close it. Close it, close it, close it. Wow. Oh, Mark, what about yeah. yours? You can have that one. There's one more left. What's the last colour? One more left. Okay, has anyone got number one? That's number three. Oh, number one, do you want to put it in here? Who's next? Put the pink one in here. Good job. And then Ruben's turn. Number two. And then number three. In here, Moggy. And then number four. Oh, you've got number four in here. That's it. Put it in there. Ruben's got number five. Go on then, number five. Number six. Fantastic. I think that's a good idea. Number one. Okay. Meredith, do you want to open that one? Yeah. And then side. Whoa! What does it say? Hold on, let's read it first. Jesus rode into Jerusalem on a donkey. The people waved palm leaves. Can you wave them, Moggy? Wave the stick. How's it? Okay, Ruben, you're number two next. That was number one. Oh, a bit of bread. What could that be for, Ruben? What could that be for, Ruben? Yeah, shall I read it? Or do you want to read it? Jesus shared the last supper with his friends. Okay, Meridian, do you want to see Wow, shiny! <laughs> Judas betrayed Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. Wow, that's what they are, 30 pieces of silver. Go on then, Ruben. Oh, you can play with them. Never say. Oh, what's that, Ruben? That's the cross. That's the cross. Where he died. Oh, should we read it? Jesus died on the cross, you're right. The soldiers were nasty to him. Okay, Meriden, don't eat them. Do you want to do number five? And then Ruben does the last one in a sec. Okay, that's it. Oh, wow, what's that, Monkey? A stone. A stone. Let's read what that's about. Three days later, when his friends went to the tomb, the stone was rolled away. Oh, how weird. Okay, Ruben, last one. Oh, it's empty. Empty. Yeah, Jesus was not there. He had risen. How brilliant. That's really cool, isn't it? That's the end. Yeah, and that's the real meaning of Easter. Bye, everyone. Bye. 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 Wow, that story is awesome. I love that Easter is more than just about chocolate, even though I do love chocolate and really want to eat this right now. But Easter is so much more than that. Isn't it amazing that God chose a way for us to have a friendship with him by sending his son to die for us and take away all the wrong things we've done? I think that is amazing. I love having a friendship with God. Now, what else is in this box? Oh my goodness, there's so much food. There's even marshmallows. Oh. I'm going to be feeling sick at the end of this. Now, what can you do with marshmallows? Any ideas? Let's head to our youth to see what ideas they have. Things to do with marshmallows. Three, two, one, go. Toasting. Uh, making a hot statue of liberty. You know, like with sticks and marshmallows. Okay. S'mores, like with a Digestive biscuits and marshmallows. Um, cooking them a bonfire. Um, gooey. Um, rocky road. <laughs> um, hot chocolate. Um, milkshakes. 
<laughs> um, decorate cakes. <laughs> decorating cakes. <laughs> what you um, uh, Rice crispy cakes that have those marshmallows to stick it to. Oh yeah. Um, the like team building exercise where you put like store like. Oh uh, yeah. You have to build like a building with it. Yeah. Um, is there like a chunky mouth challenge or something? Are you ready? Yeah. yeah! So, you can start by opening your marshmallows. So, for the game of Chubby Bunnies, you're going to go one at a time and put a marshmallow in your mouth and try and say Chubby Bunnies and we're going to see how many you can get in and say it as well as you can. Okay, so Neil, do you want to go first? You put one in and say Chubby Bunnies. Chubby Bunnies. Okay. <laughs> Chubby bunnies. Okay. Chubby bunnies. Chubby bunnies. Chubby bunnies. Third marshmallow. Chubby bunnies. <laughs> Chubby bunnies. Fourth marshmallow. Chubby bunnies. <laughs> you got a massive mouth, so you're going to go for this. Chubby bunnies. Fifth marshmallow. Chubby bunnies! Chubby bunnies! Sit the marshmallow! Chubby bunnies! Chubby bunnies! I'm like getting near the end here. Seventh marshmallow. Can you get another one in? Chubby bunnies! Marshmallow shooter. First, you get a toilet, and then you get a balloon from your messy Easter box. First step is cut off one third of your toilet. Next, get the big side of it and decorate it however you want. Ready to play chubby bunnies? Yes. Come on, louder than that. Yes. Okay, drum roll, please. First week, you can take your bunny ears and put them on. So, Ned, do you want to start? Okay, marshmallow in. Chubby bunny. Yes. Three, you go. Bunny in. Okay, next one. Chubby bunny. Next one. Bunny in. Good. Get any more in? It's fourth marshmallow. Done. Get it in. Get it in. 
get in there. I'm not sure how many more we can fit in. <laughs> Six marshmallows. How many more can we get in? <laughs> Seventh marshmallow. Brilliant. I never knew you could do so many things with marshmallows. I hope you have fun doing some of those things. Now, should we keep looking through this box? What else have we got? Oh, a card. Is this for me? Oh, it looks like I've got to write it to somebody else. I wonder how I can decorate it. Any ideas? going to get decorating this and give it to someone to bless them this Easter. Wow, this box is never ending. Look what I found now. Easter resurrection rolls. I wonder how to make these. We'll be making Easter resurrection rolls. My dad will be helping. Let's go. We will need a clean surface to work on. You might want a rolling pin. A cinnamon and sugar mix some marshmallows, a bit of water, some flour, and of course, our star ingredient, croissant pastry dough. You'll need to preheat your oven, so why not do this first? And while we're waiting for the oven to heat up, we've got time to read John 19 together. Then Pilate took Jesus and had him flogged. The soldiers twisted together a crown of thorns and put it on his head. And they clothed him in a purple robe and went up to him again and again, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! You might want to put a bit of flour on your working surface so the pastry doesn't stick. Unroll the crescent pastry carefully. This is just like the sheets that they used to wrap Jesus' body in. Give your child a marshmallow and explain that it represents Jesus. It's white and pure because he was without sin. Roll your marshmallow in a small bowl of water. This symbolizes the embalming oils they would have used on Jesus' body. Now, roll the marshmallow in the cinnamon and sugar mix. This represents the spices used to prepare Jesus' body for burial. Next up, wrap the marshmallow in the crescent pastry dough, making sure to pinch the dough together securely on the sides. Don't worry about what it looks like because it'll taste great no matter what. This represents how they wrapped Jesus' body. Repeat this process with your marshmallows and your pastry dough as many times as you like and then place the rolls in the oven. The oven symbolizes the tomb. And then bake for the amount that's specified on your pastry package. And while we're waiting for our tasty resurrection roll pastries to be baked in the oven, we're going to read John 20 verses 1 to 18. Early on, the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb. 
When the cook time is up, open the tomb and remove your rolls. And when they're cool enough to handle, open one of them up and discover what's happened to the marshmallows. Wow, the tomb is empty! This signifies how Jesus has been resurrected. The last thing to do is to celebrate Jesus while you think about him as you eat your resurrection roll. Happy Easter! Okay, we have some questions for you to think about. The first one is, God didn't want anyone to have to suffer and die for their sins. So who did God send to take away the sins of the world? It was Jesus. God's plan was to send His Son Jesus, who is perfect in every way, to take the punishment for the wrong things we do once and for all. Oh man, that makes Jesus the best ever. Let's see if you can remember this. Jesus died on Friday and was put in a tomb. But what happened on Sunday? God brought Jesus back to life. And because Jesus is alive, we can live forever with Him in heaven one day. And heaven is the best place ever. Now let's see what our final question is. Who can be saved and forgiven of their sins? Anyone or just some people? The Bible tells us that whoever believes in Jesus will be saved. Are you ready to make an Easter garden? Yes. Fantastic. Off you go. Put the tomb into the garden and then the stone will have to go in front of it because the tomb was sealed with the stone when Jesus' body was put inside. Now it's time to decorate our garden. Let's get going. To make Jesus' cross, find two sticks, one longer and one shorter. And then you need to put them together in a cross shape and use a bit of string or an elastic band to tie the two together. Excellent, then put your cross into the hill next to the tomb. Now you've got your finished Easter garden. Wow, this box is never ending. So many fun things we can make. Colours of faith keyring, eggs to decorate. There's so much we can do. Well kids, I hope you've really enjoyed our messy Easter this morning. We hope that it's encouraged you to think a little bit more about the real meaning behind Easter and what that could mean for you. It's wonderful news and God wants us to share this wonderful news with everybody. So don't forget to come on our Zoom now. We'd love you to join us. We've got lots of fun games and activities to play. In your messy Easter box, you'll find this letter. It's got all our Zoom rules and do make sure your parents read it and your parents join you on the Zoom. Next week on Easter Sunday, God First are opening their doors again for the first time in a while and we'd love you to join us. 
It's at 10.30, meeting at the Parabola Arts Centre. You'll find more details on our website, www.godfirst.org.uk. And our kids' groups are going to be starting up again on the 18th of April. So we'd love to have you guys come and join us at God First. And I think all that's left to say is Happy Easter. Bye.